So let's unpack uh, series parallel circuits. So this is a series parallel circuit, and I am going to unpack the resistance, I'm going to look at the total current, the total power, a bunch of things about a series parallel circuit. More specifically, we're going to unpack the voltage and the current dividers in a series parallel circuit, but also I'm going to point to another video where I really highlighted that. So this is in the exam review, and um, this is figure 675 from the textbook. And I want to unpack how to find the total resistance of this using resistor notation. Cool. So as far as this is going, I know the resistor notation is all about showing a way to add up the resistances or find the total resistance. It's not actually a formula though, it's a notation. It helps me develop a formula. Okay, here we go. So the resistor notation here is going to be like this. RT. Yeah, I'm going to unpack the total resistance all at once. I can see that if I was the current, it's really important to be the current. If you are the current coming out of here, all of you is going to go through here. So all of the current has to go through there. And also look at this. All of the current also has to go through R5. So this resistor notation is going to say R1 plus something. And then on the end, the last term is going to be plus R5. Yeah, so R1 plus something here, and then R5. Now, actually, if we look at this, this actually gets a little simple. Now, the circuit itself is trying to trick you. This guy, R2 and R3 and R4, they're actually all in parallel. Now, I could draw that a different way, but right now, I'm just going to unpack the resistor notation for this. This and this and this, all in parallel, are in series with this guy. So the current goes through here. The current gets to here. Look, and it's three options. Remember, the current's function is to go back to here. That's all it wants to do. It wants to go back to the battery. So it can go this way, or through R3, R1, sorry, R2, or it can go through R3, or it can go through R4. So if you were a resistor, sorry, a, a, an electron, so that's what you're gonna do. I think I said the resistor wants to go through. Anyway, we'll just go with that. The electrons are the thing that are, that are flowing and the current is the stuff that's flowing. So the current can go through here, here, or here. So we look at the options, but all of the current has to go through there and all of the current has to go through. So as far as this, this goes, well, it's just R2, R3, and R4 in parallel together. I'm gonna do this. R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3 in parallel with R4 plus R5. You see that? Because if I'm the current, I have to go through all of that. I have to go through all of this. But I have a choice to go through this or this or this. So these are like kind of choice symbols or more along the lines, therefore indicating a parallel relationship between two resistors. Now, as from here, I have to write the equation. So the equation in this case is R1 plus. Now, I can do this really cool resistor notation that helps me so much. R2 to the negative 1 plus R3 to the negative 1 plus R4 to the negative 1 to the negative 1 plus R5. So that's the total there. And if I throw these numbers in, well, I have to do that actually. Now, once I throw the numbers in, I'm going to put my units. I'm going to write this. Now, this is going to be 10 plus. I'm going to forget about the units now. Actually, I'm going to put a square bracket around here so I can actually put my units into my formulation. Okay, so my R2, that's going to be 33. 33 plus to the negative 1 plus 33 to the negative 1 plus 33 to the negative 1 all to the negative 1 plus 10 ohms okay it's proper math remember we can do the math with the units so this is all of these numbers are now represented by ohms because we put that there okay now that is going to equal now actually this it's a third of this so what's a third of 33 oh, 11 right so and the reason is because if i have three resistors that are all the same value all in parallel well i can just divide them by three, I can divide that by three, and if there are four, I can divide it by four, if they're all the same. If not, throw that in your calculator, put that in, hit the inverse, that in, hit the inverse, that in, hit the inverse bracket, and then hit the inverse. So in this case, I've got 10 plus 11 plus 10. So in that case, it's 31 
ohms. So the total resistance of this circuit is 31 ohms. Now, if I wanted to know the current going through R1, how would I do that? Well, I could use Ohm's law. Well, actually, I think I have to use Ohm's law because I don't have the power. I don't really have anything else. Okay, good. So I know that the current going through here is also the same current that goes through here. It's also the same current that's the total resistance. Take a look at this. I can say, I'm just going to kind of draw a little box around here. I can say that I R1 equals I T. Can you see that? Because all of the current has to go through there. So the current that, that this whole circuit is drawing from this battery has to go through there. It also has to go through here. We can also say this equals I R five. Yeah. So if I want to know what this is, if I used Ohm's law, right? So if I want to calculate I equals V over R, which V do I use and which R do I use? Well, it all depends on what my scrubs, subscripts are. Which I do I want? I want I T. Okay. So I T equals, now again, I have to use V S over R T. Oh, okay. And it helps me, those subscripts help me so much. You have to put subscripts in. Especially when these, these formulas get really complicated. So I know my VS and my RT. So if I were to put, actually, if I were to decide to use this one instead, it would look like this. I, I'm going to write or, whoa, that's a bit of a mess, but it doesn't matter. Or I R5 equals V R5 divided by R5. So I have to be specific. But... If I did know this, yeah, then I could actually solve for this, and then I could easily tell you what this is. But I don't know what VR5 is, but if I were to find out the total current, I could calculate VR5. But right now, I do know that I have the total resistance, and I have this. So I can put these values in. I can say 3 volts divided by 31 ohms. So in this case, I just want to make sure I got it right. 10, 20, 31. Yep. Yeah. So 3 divided by 31 is 3 divided by 30, 31 equals, okay, so I have 96.774 milliamps. So I'm just going to go for 96.77 because you know me, I like to, I'd like you guys to write your numbers down with two decimal places. So 96 point, what, what was the number? I should be breaking it. 96.77. Okay, here we go. That's equaling to 96.77. Just want to show you this. See what's going on there? That's all my calculator shows me. If you guys don't have your calculators figured out so it gives you engineering notation like right away, it's a bad thing. Okay, good. So um, I know that that is milliamps. Okay, because my my calculator told me that. Okay, here we go. So I have that value. So that's my total. Oh, look at this. Now I can find this. I can find VR5 because I know this because I know this and I know that. Sorry. Yes, I know this because I know this because I know this. So I can rearrange this thing to equal R5. And that's going to look like this. This is just Ohm's law. I can say... If I wanted to, you know, let's find the voltage across this. I'm going to say V, I'm going to kind of block this off here. Okay, so I'm going to say VR1 equals, now that is IR. Again, I have to be specific about what I'm talking about. This is IR1 and that's R1. Now I know that IR1, I know IR1 because I know this is equal to that. So I know IR1 is this. So I could just write that down. Okay, here we go. 96.77 milliamps times 10 ohms. Now that is going to be, I'm just going to shift the decimal. So that's 96, 9.96, oh no, 906. It's going to be, yeah, it's actually going to be 9. 160, it should be. Let me do the math. 
that times 10 equals 96. That's better. So um, not, that's 96.77. In this case, it's going to be millivolts because I had milli here. So I'm going to keep milli because I haven't you know, changed the decimal. But the other thing is I just put it in my calculator. I just had that number and I just multiplied it by 10 and I shifted the decimal, but I just multiplied it by 10. Whoa, it's 9.6. No, that's 967. Whoa, you see? got to pay attention. You know what? It says that on my calculator. I just didn't look. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, good. So that's what happened. So I shifted the decimal and that's fine. And then that should actually be a 4 because I told you guys I always want 2 decimals. That should be a 4 and that's again milli. Volts. Okay, good. So I know what this is. I use Ohm's law to unpack that, and I got the I got this value because I got this value. So I used Ohm's law to unpack the total current. Now, if I wanted to, I could then do the exact same thing to find the voltage across this, which actually would be the same because it has the same value as this. Now, what's the voltage drop across R two? Well, actually, what's the voltage drop across R three? Or more specifically, what's the voltage drop across R4? Well, the thing is, it's all the same. And I know that I'm starting with 3 volts. I'm losing nine, almost a volt here, 967 volts here. I'm losing another 967. So the voltage drop across here is whatever's left. And we know that because we studied that in Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit. And let me unpack that. Okay, good. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And then we're going to take a look at volt Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit. So you may think, well, how do I apply that to a how do I apply that to a series parallel circuit? You have to get the, the series elements of that circuit. So essentially what's going on is that that's one of the series elements, that's another, and this is another series element. And it comes from the resistor notation. It really helps. I'm going to write that down again. So I know that RT equals R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3 in parallel with R4 plus R5. So actually what I can say is I can do this. V R V T or V S is going to be equal to V R one plus V R two parallel R three parallel R four plus V R five. So the voltage drop across all of these is the same. They're all in parallel. Now I did say I was going to rearrange this formula, so I think I will. Or this uh, this circuit. And look at this. I'll use the same color. Where's my blue? So I could make this go straight up to there, and I could make this go up to there, and I could change this a little bit and get rid of this and make that go down to there and that go down to there. Look at that. That's no different. Those, you know, that was just a bit of a trick. The guy who wrote the book tried to trick you. Huh. But really those are all in parallel. So they all share the same voltage. So the voltage drop across these plus the voltage drop across that plus the voltage drop across that equals this. So now, what are we doing again? We're trying to find the voltage drop across this. Now, Kirchhoff's voltage law for a series circuit says that the voltage drop across this plus the voltage drop across that and the voltage drop across all of that equals voltage sum. So right now, what I want to do is I want to rearrange this. I'm going to just continue with my blue pen. V R2 in parallel with R3 parallel with R4 equals Vs minus Vr1 minus Vr5. Now in this case, I know this is 3 minus this value over here, which is 977.4 milliamps minus 9 whoa, milliamps millivolts. Now this is, I have to be careful here. This is 3 volts. That's millivolts. And this is 977.4 millivolts. So I think the best bet here is going to use my calculator. You know what? I know this value is actually in my, let me just show you how to do the math quickly without trying to figure all this out. You'll have to put that in memory and then, then you can put 3 and then subtract it from there. Dude, it's not that complicated. All of these, that value is already in my calculator. It's already right there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that value and I'm actually going to multiply it by 2 because I'm, I'm subtracting it twice. So times 2 equals. I mean, it's just another way to do this expression. Okay? Now, I'm going to subtract it from 3. Now, essentially what's going on is that that gives me a negative value. Because I needed to do this subtracted this, but I did this minus that. But that's not right. Well, it's not because it gives me a, a negative value, but it's still the differential between the two. So I can just make sure I don't actually write the negative down that I got on my calculator. And that value there is 1.0. Six volts. So now that equals this. So I know that the voltage drop across all three of these equals 1.06 volts. Well, guess what? It's all the same. So I can now write, I could write VR2 equals VR3 equals VR4. And I can say that that also equals V. R2 in parallel with VR, sorry, VR2 in parallel with R3 in parallel with R4. No, you can't read that, but you heard me say it. Um, and I know that value, so now I can say VR2 equals 1.06 volts. And I can say the same with any of those. So we've just unpacked voltage here. Now, as far as the power goes, there are a bunch of different ways to look at power. One is, I can just say the total power is the total current times the total voltage. I know the total voltage. I've calculated the total current. It's here. I can multiply the two and that'll give me the total power. If I wanted to know the power across just this resistor, well, I know the current going through it. It's the total current. I know the voltage drop across it. I calculated it. Well, I can find the power. I know the voltage drop across this mm -hmm, because actually I calculated the voltage drop across that by doing this. That's the voltage drop across this and this and this. So I could then calculate the power through there because I know the current going through here. Oh, I don't. I don't know the current going through there. I know the total current goes through here, but it gets divided up amongst here. Now it gets divided evenly because they're all 33, but let's just say that they're not all 33. What do I do? How do I find the total current through here? I mean, the total power through there. Well, I know it's resistance, right? And I know it's voltage as well. And we know that V squared over R equals power. So I can calculate the power there because I know its value of resistance. I know the voltage drop across it. Well, there's a formula for that, and I just said it, but I'll write it down here. Let me just kind of like make a little window in here. So we know V, sorry, <laughs> we know that T equals V squared over R. So again, I can throw my subscripts in that the power of R2 equals R2 over R2. I think we're good. You don't really need to know any more than this. Now, I did say I was going to unpack the series. I was going to unpack the current divider and the formula and the current divider formula and the volts divider formula in this circuit. But I'm actually going to point you to another video that I'll try and put the link in here somewhere so you can see it. But if not, it'll be on Blackboard. So you can go ahead and watch that video to get a better understanding of how to apply the current divider and the voltage divider in a series parallel circuit. It's not as easy or it's not just so simple. Why well, you have to watch that video? If you got any questions, you know my email. Okay, bye.